Hi, welcome to episode 5, uh, October 6, 2014, uh, about my open source uh, stuff. <clears throat> I, um, today I have uh, Africa here on this side and uh, South America here on this side. Uh, I wanted to, to just mention that um, there's been some um, interesting HTTP2 fun this um, last week or so. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, the Google services, Gmail and so on, all started to offer HTTP2. I don't really know exactly when because I just checked some point last week and I noticed that it was up and I noticed that Twitter wasn't running HTTP2 at that point. So it was fun to see that uh, first there was a blog posting about Internet Explorer 11 on Windows 10 that actually has uh, activated HTTP2 draft 14 level. So And there was also a post on Slashdot later on and so on. So there's been some kind of awareness around that. So that, that was fun. And then uh, the Chromium team posted on the HTTP BIS mailing list and said that they're going to activate more HTTP2 draft 14 in beta and some other versions. So there are definitely going to be more browsers doing HTTP2 uh, going forward. <clears throat> and then um, I'm not exactly, uh, I don't know exactly when either, but uh, Twitter, at least this Saturday, like two days ago, they activated HTTP2. 14 on their front end server so everyone who's been who uses Twitter then on, on, on the web with a recent enough browser like uh, Firefox beta or fire no, uh, maybe not beta by the way nightly or Aurora they immediately uh, ran into problems because there's a bug in the Twitter implementation apparently H pack there's a um, Bugzilla entry for Firefox about it that kind of details the problems and uh, Twitter guy saying that they're on to the problem. So we'll see what, where that leads. <clears throat> uh, the second really, I would say, notable um, interrupt problem when one of these big sites uh, deploy HTTP2 like this. So uh, interesting to see. And I, I think also it's good to see that we have a a big enough audience that, that are actually already using HTTP2 so that we discover these problems pretty quickly. Even if um, uh, people blame the browser, of course, first. That's kind of natural. That's what people do, so it's easy to make that conclusion. <clears throat> but, but uh, yeah, I believe Firefox users were the ones primarily affected by this. In, in Firefox, I've been working on this um, detecting network changes um, stuff that I mentioned before that I landed in such a, uh, after such a long time before for Windows. And I, I have a, a patch pending for Firefox OS and Linux. Actually, they work the same way. So I hope to do the same, uh, same underlying code for both of them. And I'm struggling. I have a, I've gotten good reviews and so on, but I, you know, we have a lot of different platforms and we have emulators and, and stuff. And so I have some problems just building and running fine on all of them. So I, I'm tweaking and, and, and trying. So yeah, moving forward at least. <clears throat> and uh, last uh, or during this week, I also finally just announced that I'm quitting the Rockbox project. Rockbox project, one of the open source projects that I, I co-founded back in 2001, 2002, and I've not been doing anything in it for, for years. So it was just me finally unsubscribing from the development mailing list, just saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm off pretty much what I've been for years anyway. So it wasn't really any news, even though I got some feedback on that and some good comments and ah, yeah. That was good. <clears throat> so uh, in the curl project then, always um, kind of things going on there. I uh, posted a blog post uh, this week about uh, an ordinary day in the curl project, pretty much what I do in the curl project from day to day, which is what I do. I, I mean, I'm maintaining a, a, a small open source project. There's a lot of tiny things going on. I'm just tried to uh, 
put the focus on why I don't develop more new stuff in the project and, and how a lot of tiny details take a lot of time in, in, in a, such a project. <clears throat> Otherwise, we've been working on, we have a, a pretty good patch for certificate pinning coming in, at least for the OpenSSL backend. I saw uh, also an additional uh, patch for the GNU TLS backend. So that's good stuff, I think. There's an interesting patch coming in for SMB SIFS support. So that would be another protocol like SMB colon slash slash host name, blah, 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 for, for the um, file access protocol. Microsoft thing, at least originally. <clears throat> uh, and there's, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention that I've, I've uh, run uh, the, the car source code, uh, the most up to date one, at least a couple of days ago. I, I put it to Coverity, the static code analyzer thing. And they offer some free runs for open source projects. And I've, I've done it before, a, a good while ago. And I keep we have these regular scans with the clan analyzer, and that is a good tool too. But I did it with, with Coverity the other day, and that was really good. It found a lot of more, uh, a lot of uh, additional suspicious spots in the code that we should address with dead code and possibly checking for null pointers, blah, blah, blah. And, and nothing really critical, but a lot of tiny, small things that we should polish up and make better. So. That is a good tool and that is some work that is going on. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, regarding the mailing lists on, on, in curl, they're all um, in moderate the first post modes. That means that if you're not, the first time you subscribe and you send a post, you are moderated. So someone, a moderator has to uh, click you through. That's basically one, another spam prevention method because not only do we require subscription, because if you're not sub subscribed, we just discard your mail completely. That is just because of the infinite spam problem we have otherwise. And uh, and there's also actually quite a lot of people or bots or whatever that actually subscribe and post as a spam method. So we uh, ver verify simply then that you're actually not a bot by making sure that the first post is at least fine. <clears throat> I wanted to just say that we do that really quickly, but that's mostly me. So sometimes I'm asleep so that you can possibly wait for like 12 hours at times or, or, or whatever, but you should be fine. So basically whenever you post the first time, it should go through the list within minutes, really mostly, but hours at worst. <clears throat> Um, yeah, right. And that, that is kind of how the week look ahead too. I'm going to continue working with coverty bugs in curl. I have, and I'm going to review those patches. There are some other interesting patches and there are some bug fixes coming in. So another day, um, another week, I should say, uh, that's about it. Uh, there is nothing else to add for this week, I think. Any questions, any feedback, or whatever, you just post them to me or in the, under this video or whatever. And um, yeah, see you again next week.